No, it most certainly is not. But I did it anyway. What's up, crew? Welcome back to Libertalia Game Supply. First and foremost, if you're looking for a nice, cheap deck you can take to locals and reliably win a few games every now and then, definitely look somewhere else. This is not going to be it. This is absolute trash. But once the idea got in my mind there, I just kind of had to go for it and see if I could make it work in any sort of way. And, uh, yeah. So if you're looking to win one out of every 20 games you play, but have that one win feel absolutely fantastic, this is the deck for you right here. You are looking at Valmonica Runic. Now my initial thought in building this abomination was that Runic is kind of a stall-based control deck, and Valmonica is also kind of a stall-based control deck. The problem here is that you don't really have a win condition if you're not milling out, because the Runics take away your chances to attack, and the Valmonica's main win condition is through controlling the board with the Divine Oddity, wiping the board with the Odd Deity, and then attacking three times with it, uh, hopefully sealing up the game there. The other major issue here is that both decks kind of rely on a field spell. The Runics much more so than the Valmonica, but the Valmonica's search spell is a field spell. Which does suck, because if you open the Runic one first and you activate it to try to get rolling, if at any point you need the Valmonica Field Spell to search one of your Pendulum Monsters, you then have to give up your Fountain, which is what makes Runics good, and then hopefully get another one to put it back on the board. But it's not entirely unlikely that you end up drawing a hand that allows you to go for the search and then just get rid of it right away with the Fountain, and now you get the best of both worlds. However, that is not something you can completely rely on. So the deck is built to stall as much as possible, predominantly mill until you got game, and control the game using the Valmonica counters that reduce attack points and allow you to link summon on your opponent's turn during their battle phase. Now I won't go super in depth into what all the cards do if you want more of a discussion like that. I posted a video a couple days ago with a Valmonica list that is built to actually work like Valmonica's are supposed to work, I think. And so that one's probably gonna be a little bit more reliable if you wanted to just play this archetype, but that's not what I'm here for today. So to briefly review, the Valmonica's are based on these Pendulum Monsters. Every time you activate an effect that gains you life points, this one gets a counter. Every time you activate an effect that loses you life points, this one gets a counter. The way we're generating those counters is the things like Jurigata, which gives you a thousand life points and summons itself. And then all of the spells and traps that aren't the field spell have a option between either a gain or loss effect that'll give you something. They do something depending on which one you choose to do. So flash them all on the screen there you can see. Now the effect that they do is optional. So if you don't have targets for say, like you have nothing in your hand for Skelta to put on your deck to draw to, you can still activate the card to gain you 500 life points and then not use the effect. And that does come up once in a while because you just need the extra counter or whatever the case may be. You've also probably noticed at this point that this monstrosity is in here. We got final countdown, it's at one, so we're playing it at one, and we're playing no ways to search it whatsoever, and I'm totally fine with that. If you were to happen across the final countdown early on, you might as well just activate it. And it's pretty easy to stall for 20 turns with this deck because you're just constantly going to be trying to jack those life points up as high as you can and then protect the castle so your opponent just can't get through with an attack. The other benefit of adding Runic to Velmonica, I felt, was that you get that free monster on board with the second effect of all the Runic spell cards. And so apart from the Hoogan, which will get you the fountain which you need to make the other half of your deck actually work, the Moonin does a really good job of racking you up counters turn after turn. See, in the end phase, it boosts you by a thousand, and so if the angel is on board when that happens, you get the counter for it, and it's also an effect monster. And the reason that that's relevant is because the Valmonica link monsters only require one effect monster. Now, that's incredibly generic, but they also require you to control a pendulum monster with three of the resonance counters on it, which is why we need to get one of these to three as quickly as possible. You need three on the demon to summon the fiend link, and you need three on the angel to summon the fairy link. And which one you're going for kind of is decided by the hand that the deck gives you, but also by 
you know what the situation is in the game and after you get through about two turns as long as you didn't completely brick you should have enough counters on both of them to summon whichever one you want now in the other video i had said that i thought that the odd deity was the better link monster by far and that's because that deck attacks for game and so being able to attack three times and wipe the board prior to doing so is going to be pretty important in a deck that's trying to attack for game However, in this deck, we don't attack. Attacking is for peasants, and so we're focusing on the Divine Oddity. The beautiful thing about this card is, beside it being able to protect itself from being destroyed by removing three resonance counters on your side of the field, as a quick effect, it can copy the effects of a Monica Speller Trap card in your graveyard or in your Banish Zone. Now that Banish Zone piece is relevant because the main deck Velmonicas, when they're on the field as a monster, can copy the effect of a Speller Trap that correlates to the type of effect that they benefit from. So the angel can copy the life point gain effects, the demon can copy the life point loss effects. In order to do that, they banished that card out of the graveyard, and so they couldn't do it again with that exact same copy of that card on the following turn. The oddity gets around that by being able to just copy it out of the banish zone, and it doesn't have to move the card anywhere to do so. What's even more great about this card is that the trap cards have a activation condition where if you were to control a Velmonica Link Monster when you activated the trap, you can choose to use both effects. So if you look at the card on screen here, Guiding Rhythm, I think it's by far the better trap, but they're both pretty good, would allow you to destroy a Speller Trap on the field as well as bounce a monster on the field back to the owner's hand. So that can be yours or your opponent's if you wanted to recycle one of these on the field for something or more than likely just to interrupt your opponent because that is a quick effect and you get to do them both. So you get to just start taking apart the board little by little with that quick effect every turn regardless of if you've banished this to copy the effect earlier or not. The selecting melody has a blanket protection effect so your Valmonicas can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects this turn as well as being able to negate the effect of a monster your opponent controls, and so that's also going to be pretty handy from time to time. The other extra deck monster that is kind of a central piece to the deck is going to be Seabeck Sorcerer. Now I suppose technically you could burn eight times over eight turns for a thousand damage and get game that way. I'm not really focused on that because that's ridiculous if we're already going to spend what would be 16 turns for final countdown trying to burn 8k, we might as well just stall the other four turns and get that final countdown win, you know? However, it is super useful in generating a ton of counters. So anytime an effect would activate that gains you life points, you can then burn your opponent and yourself for a thousand. So in that instance, you'd be gaining the counter off of whatever effect just gained you life points on the angel as well as the counter on the demon for the Seabeck Sorcerer burning you life points. And if by some terrible mistake you happen to attack with this or something that it's pointing to and it does damage, you gain life points equal to the damage you just dealt, and then it still does that burn effect. And so it can generate its own angel counters anyway. The rest of the extra deck is just Link good stuff as well as the Jerry because you might need to get that fountain back out of the graveyard at some point if you're playing a game that's 20 turns long. And you could probably condense these three down into just this and SP. However, I was certainly not going to suggest just to any of you to buy a $100 card for a $100 deck that is going to lose most of the time. And so I took that out and put the two Nightmares in instead. You could flip flop the Phoenix and the Cerberus if you wanted. It does not really matter. We're focused on these guys right here. For some of this other stuff in the side here that's not really a side, it was just stuff that I was considering. We got Scrubbed Raid. This seemed really interesting. It was in a deck list, a runic deck list that topped recently, and so I wanted to try it out. Now, it's a pretty decent card being able to just end the battle phase. The problem is this deck is built to play forever, not just until you manage to deck them out, because it's going to deck out way slower because of how much of this other stuff we're playing. And because this deck searches and draws and does all sorts of stuff so well, you're going to run out of resources and possibly deck your own self out if you use this every turn and start like getting rid of stuff you need just to end battle phases. And so I opted for there can be only one instead, and it fits in here pretty well because we got Fairy, Fiend, Fiend, they're the same, but you can kind of get around it by just like linking your stuff away. The Sorcerer is an Aqua, which is odd, and then the Fairy and the Fiend links. So you do have to play around it yourself a little bit, but ideally you're setting your own stuff up. So if you can get this on board with both Pendulums and a couple Runics and Fountain on the board, and throw this in the back row, you're in a really good spot. And so you just wouldn't activate it until you get there. For the Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood, because this deck doesn't attack for game and it's not comboing to attack for game or do anything of that nature, if your opponent figures that out, it'd be pretty easy for them to just decide to stop special summoning for the turn. You lose half your life points 
And then uh, now they have an easier time of capitalizing on a mistake you might make. And so I took that out and I like the Jurigato much better instead. And then the Starlight Road, I thought for sure this was gonna be an easy add. In the main deck, it sucks because they'd have to be maining the one of Harpy's Feather Duster, then draw it, then use it on you in order for you to get any benefit out of it. It eats up an extra deck spot for a card that doesn't really do much for the actual goal of the deck. And if they just never trigger it, you are sitting on three dead cards that do nothing to benefit you. And so it's absolutely a side deck card through and through. Now, if you do happen to try this beast out, definitely let me know how it goes for you. It takes a few times to figure out what order to start doing stuff in to give you the best chance of success, but I'm sure you can figure it out. It'll be fine. If you have any other ideas for what kind of a deck Valmonica can pair poorly with, let me know about that down below. Maybe I can give that a try too. We are now a week away from getting these guys in the TCG, so if that's something you've been looking forward to, I'm happy for you. I probably won't pick this stuff up, but Memento seems pretty cool, so check out that deck list too. In the meantime, happy deck building. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Goodbye.